Mingla porosi braya baha. Zika palos ke telebrenda baha. Iya toska panda la su. Mengra <laughs> Alla bojo kolo de bruna katile de bambro na mozekile de brina katali de bamba membranda gele membranga dile membranga dile membranga dile membranga dile Father we give you praise lift your hands and begin to bless him and praise him for answered prayer tonight Baba rakatule bereke tenekelea Oh Father we receive answers we receive souls Thank you Lord we we receive disciples raised we receive an army of people going into the fields to advance the kingdom of God through the preaching of the gospel. Metula da bambre ne ketile de bambro no mozokala de brina katole de bangle ne mangro do sokala de brina ketile de baba ya nagaga. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that tonight we have the privilege to come before your holy word. And we approach your word humbly and we res- approach your word respectfully tonight. Thank you that revealed knowledge is granted everybody under the sound of my voice. Bodies and yokes are destroyed. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Your people built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus glorified. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. So say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service where we have Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, all our campuses around the world. We're glad to have everybody connected. It's training evangelism and discipleship 2020. And we're excited. It's been a time of learning and building and growing and growing in the knowledge of Christ. Can I have a powerful amen? Are we excited about the privilege of learning tonight? Can we celebrate this opportunity with a shout? Give the Lord a praise. Glory! Amen. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self this night as we get in the world. All right, so yesterday we began to look at very carefully, we began to examine how to preach the gospel or how the gospel is preached in demonstration of spirit and power. How the gospel is preached in demonstration of the spirit and power. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 19. Matthew 28, verse number 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. If you have a pen, I'd like you to underline the word all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Take note of 20 particularly. Teaching them to observe. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So we got some, you know, some, we arrived at some summary yesterday that I'd like to talk, touch quickly. We said the word preach is the Greek word keruso. It means facts are specific. Facts are specific. So he says we should teach specific things. So the teaching is a specific training. The teaching is a specific training. And we established that going for evangelism means that you will get people saved. And when they are saved, you will turn them into disciples. You will turn them into students. You will turn them into learners. You will turn them into people that are learning the, the, you know, the message of Christ. He says, teaching them to observe all things that I have, I have commanded you. All things. All right. And these all things are specific. Specific facts. Not just everything, but specific facts that he has commanded. Now go back to John chapter 14 verse 16. John chapter 14 verse number 16. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter 
that he may abide with you forever. 17. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Give me verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So he had given them a background of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14 verse 16 to 17 where we read it says clearly that there is an indwelling of the Spirit. There is an indwelling of the Spirit. And he calls that indwelling of the Spirit another comforter. Allos paracletos. Allos paracletos. The same spirit, it means the same advantage. Allos paracletos means the same person. The same spirit, the same advantage, the same person. Look at John 14, 26. John chapter 14, verse number 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So he says, number one, clearly that there is an indwelling of the spirit. And number two, he says, he will teach you all things. He will teach you all things. So there is an indwelling of the spirit who will teach you all things. Pay attention. John chapter 15 now, verse 26. John 15, 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. He shall testify of me. Now, we're going to read from that 26 into chapter 16. Remember, I told you to ignore the punctuations and the chapters. Alright, so this discourse we're looking at tonight started from chapter 14 of John, of John chapter 14. That's where the whole you know, discourse started from. Where he began to discuss his resurrection. In fact, it was only John who wrote about what Jesus said about his resurrection before he died. Only John took the time to go into those details. And it was John who was very, very detailed about it. In fact, John had more details about the gospel more than the other three authors. He had more details than the other three authors of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John was the one who told us about his flesh and blood being eternal life. John had all those facts. Now look at John chapter 14 from verse 1 first. John chapter 14 from verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, verse 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Next verse. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. He says, if you believe in God, you believe in me. Then he says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place. When I prepare the place, I will come back and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Then Jesus now said, in that day you will know that I in you, the father in me, we in you. All right, now, please pay attention. John is talking about the resurrection of Jesus when he made those statements. He was making reference to the resurrection of Jesus. He now says that the spirit of this truth who will raise Jesus from the dead will now dwell in you. He will now take up residence on your inside. The spirit of resurrection. The reality that Jesus is alive will dwell in you. And he will be in you forever. So now he got to chapter 15 where we are. And then he began to speak in chapter 15 where he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. My father is the husband man. And all of that is part of the story of his resurrection. Because the discourse started in John chapter 14. 
I go, I come, another comforter. Chapter 15, chapter 16, and you will see it very carefully. Now look at that chapter 15, verse number 25. John 15, 25. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Now look at verse 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Is that the new birth or the resurrection? Huh? What was Jesus talking about in verse 26? New birth or resurrection? Resurrection. All right, good. Now pay attention. Where did he tell them in chapter 14 that the spirit will dwell? Huh? In them. Correct. Now, he says, he shall testify of me. The spirit shall testify of me. Is a Greek word, materio. And I can spell it for you. M-A-R-T-E-R-E-O. M-A-R-T-E-R-E-O. Materio, to testify. Remember, we are seeing the same word. You shall be witnesses. Witnesses, witnesses. The same term. Now, he says... There is the Spirit's witness, and the Spirit will testify of me. He will testify of me. You shall be witnesses. The Spirit will testify of me. Now, the Spirit testifying of Jesus and you being witnesses, is it the same or different? The spirit testifying of Jesus and you being witnesses, is it the same or two different things? The same. All right. He will testify is the same. Now, the spirit dwells where? In you. And the spirit will testify where? In you. And you will testify where? You will testify where? To the world. Okay, so in other words, he's saying to them that there will be a spirit witness of the message. A spirit witness of the message. Look at that John 15, 27. John 15, 27. And you also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. You have been with me from the beginning. You will testify of me. He was talking about the preaching or the heralding of the gospel. The preaching or the heralding of the gospel. Then he now moves to chapter 16 verse 1 of, the, of John. John 16 verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. Why will he say they should not be offended? Because he has been talking about this in the pretext. Look at chapter 15, verse 18 and 19. John 15, 18 and 19. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. 18, I mean 19. If you were of the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore... The world hated you. He's been talking in that line already in John chapter 15. So now he talks about how they will, how you, how they will be persecuted. How the believers, the preachers will be persecuted. Look at verse 20 of John 15. John chapter 15 verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. He said all that. Then he now says in chapter 16 verse 1. John 16 verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. I said all these things so that you will not take offense. 
if they hate you, know that you are, you are not their own. And if they hate you, know that it is because you are mine and you are bearing my sufferings. Know that it is because you are mine and you are bearing my sufferings. So he says, I say these things to you so you will not be offended. John chapter 16 again, verse 2 to 5 now. John 16, 2 to 5. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Three. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Next verse. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. Verse 5. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you accept me whither goest thou. Question. What is he talking about here? His death, his resurrection? Huh? Or both of them? Both of them. Okay. Verse 6. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow had filled your heart. What did he say to them that made sorrow to fill their heart? Huh? I will die. I will go. Okay? Now, stay with me. So he was specifically talking about the ministry of the gospel. The ministry of the gospel. But if you didn't follow the context of all that we have read, you'll be thinking of a different thing. So now verse 7 now brings the whole thing into context. Verse 7 of John 16. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. The word expedient is the word sonfero. Some pharaoh. It means an advantage. It is advantageous or it is profitable for you that I go away. So now, if you started reading along with us from chapter 14 where I started all of this discourse in this service, when he says I go away, is it an absence or a presence? Huh? Going away, is it absence or presence? All right, presence. Because what he was saying is, I go to die and come back to receive you to myself. So the going is my coming to you. The going is my coming to you. John 16, 8 again. Please pay attention. John 16, 8. And when he is come... He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. When he is come, the comforter whom I will send. The word send is the word pempo in the Greek, P-E-M-P-O. It means put aside or to put to. It means to place in you or to place for you. Whom I will send, Pempo. It means to put aside or it means to put to. That is to place in you or to place for you. The comforter. So up to chapter 5. I mean up to verse 5, verse 6, verse 7. He was discussing ministry. The preaching of the gospel. Then verse 8 says, When he, the spirit of truth is come. Where will the spirit of truth be? Now talk to me, citizens. He will be where? In you, in the believer. Okay. He will be in us. And he will convince the world of sin. Give me that verse 8 and 9 again. And when he's come, he will reprove the world of sin. Another translation has it as convinced. He will reprove or convince the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Next verse. Of sin because they believe not on me. Next verse. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. So now, please pay attention. He will convince the world of sin how? How? 
How will he convince the world of sin? Remember two words. The spirit will testify. You will bear witness. Where will the spirit be? In you. How will he testify? Through you. So when he says he will convict the world of sin, how will he do that? Through your witness. Exactly. He will convict the world of sin through your witness because he lives in you. Verse 8. Verse 8. When he is come, when he is come, is the Greek word ekenos. E-K-E-I-N-O-S. E-K-E-I-N-O-S. Ekenos. It's a demonstrative pronoun that is referring to an earlier discussion. That is the same, when he comes, he will convict. That word convince can be challenging because it is used for many purposes. But the truth is, that word is used in this instance for a specific. That word convince can be used to spot an issue or to convince somebody of a wrong. But in the Greek, it is the word elek, elek, eleko, eleko, E-L-E-G-C-H-O, eleko, convince, eleko. That is up till this point, what was Jesus dealing with here? Was he dealing with a personal thing or he was dealing with the ministry of the spirit? Huh? Was he dealing with a personal experience or he was dealing with the ministry of the spirit? Okay, so the spirit will convince the word eleko, and in a few minutes we will dis unveil that word. Now, that ministry of the spirit is it personal or a public ministry? Huh? Public ministry. Okay, all right. Now, so the witness is a witness of Christ. The spirit will be a witness of Christ, which is a public ministry of Christ. And when you get involved in this public ministry of Christ, you will be persecuted. Men will hate you. And you will be a witness of me. And you will testify of me. You will be persecuted. Men will hate you. You will be mocked. You will be persecuted. Men will hate you. You will be mocked. But you will be a witness of me. And you will testify of me. Alright? So, is Jesus discussing ministry here or a personal thing? ministry. So, he will convict or convince a verb, eleko. Let's see how that word, eleko, convince is used. Let's do exegesis on that word. Matthew 18, 15. Matthew 18, 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, Thou hast gained thy brother. The word eleko there is go and tell him. Go and tell him. The word eleko. Go and tell him. E-L-E-G-C-H-O. It is used for a fault here. To show someone something. Look at Luke chapter 3 verse 19. Luke chapter 3 verse 19. But Herod the Tetrarch being reproved by him. For Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done. Now go back to verse 18 and see the pretext of that verse. Verse 18. And many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. In his preaching, he reproved Herod. In his preaching, he reproved Herod. So far, the word eleko is via words via words to say something to say something look at it again in John 3 20 John chapter 3 verse 20 John 3 20 for everyone that doeth evil hated the light neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved Lest his deeds should be reproved. Talking about the preaching of the gospel where salvation is concerned. Another place the word eleko is used is in John 8 46. 
John 8, 46. Which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? Convinced me of sin. Which of you can tell me I have done wrong? Eleko. Convinced me of sin. So, so far, it is to show a fault or to show an action. To convince is to show a fault or to show an action. Look at 1 Corinthians 14.24. 1 Corinthians 14.24. But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all. He is judged of all. 25. 25. And those are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. So eleko means to show something or to show something by words. By words. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11 and 12. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11 and 12. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. Next verse. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. All right? So he's dealing with words. Verse 13 of Ephesians 5. Verse 13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doeth make manifest is light. All right? So it's talking about words. So the word eloko is to show something. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 20. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 20. Them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. The word eloko. That is show it to everybody. Let everybody know. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 2. Second Timothy 4 verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So, so far, this reproving is preaching to show something by words. The reproving is preaching, which means to show something by words. Titus chapter 1 verse 9. Titus chapter 1 verse 9. Holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. To convince, which is preaching. To convince the gainsayers. Verse 13 of Titus 1. Verse 13 of Titus chapter 1. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Which is preaching now. Rebuke them sharply, which is preaching that they may be sound in the faith. Titus 2.15. Titus 2.15. Many scriptures good for your health. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man or let no man despise thee. Hebrews 12 verse 5. All of this is with words. Hebrews 12 verse 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked. The chastening or the, 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 you know, the, the, the words, communication with words. James 2.9. James 2.9. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Words. Jude verse 15. Jude verse 15. Jude verse is just one chapter. Jude verse 15. Because it's just one chapter. Okay, Jude chapter 1 verse 15. Amen. Jude is the book before Revelation. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed 
and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So the word they are convinced is with words. Revelation 3.9. Revelation 3 9. I mean 19. 3 19. Sorry. Revelation 3 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now, having shown you that convincing has to do with the words elaborately through the scriptures, go back to John 16 8. John 16 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. How is this going to be done? Huh? By preaching the gospel. How will the Holy Spirit preach the gospel? Huh? Through those whom he lives in. All right? Okay, good. He will reprove the world of sin. Who are the witnesses? Huh? The apostles and ourselves. Now watch this very carefully. Now John 16, 8 and 9 again. Because I'm walking, I'm walking. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. Next verse. Of sin because they believe not on me. So, in this instance, was he talking present tense or future? When he was speaking in John 16, was he talking about a present situation or a future situation? A future. What is the future situation? When will that future situation be? Uh -uh. After his resurrection. He was talking about resurrection. When he is come, he will reprove. When? When will he reprove the world of sin? After resurrection. Because after resurrection, where will he be? He will be in you and then who will be witnesses? And he will testify of Jesus how? Through you because he lives where? In you. Exactly. Is it getting clear now? That's what Jesus is communicating. Now stay with me because I'm still going somewhere. So he will show proof of my resurrection because they believe not on me. He will convince the world of sin means he will show proof of my resurrection because the world of... Hey, listen carefully everybody. It doesn't take faith to believe that Jesus died. You don't need faith to believe that Jesus died. You don't need faith to believe that anybody died. Because human beings die anyway. True or false? You don't need faith. You don't need faith to believe that somebody died. But you need all the faith to believe that he rose. The people didn't need faith to believe that Jesus died. But they will need faith to believe in his resurrection. So that's why the spirit of truth in the believer will testify of Jesus' resurrection through the believer, which is what we call the word of faith or the gospel that saves. The word of faith or the gospel that saves. The gospel that saves is preached by believers who have the Holy Ghost living on their inside. Now, of righteousness, because I go to my Father. Hmm. Is that a fault finding proof of righteousness? He will reprove the world of righteousness. Is that fault finding or a faith inspiring? Faith inspiring. All right. So there is a term there. I go to my father. I go to my father. Is it departure or indwelling? Huh? So when he said, I go to my father, what was he implying? I will dwell in the believer. How many of you remember Jesus said, I and my father, mm -mm. Uh, I and my father will come into you and make our what? 
So when Jesus said, I go to my father, what is he saying? I come to you because eventually I and my father, where is our destination? In you. So I go to my father means we come into you. So going is not departure. Going is arrival in the believer. Teaching good? Going is not departure. Going is arrival in the believer. Now, so because I go to my father, is that resurrection or death? Huh? Resurrection. Because the going is the coming into the believer. But will he go as a dead man or he will go as a risen Lord? Exactly. So when he say I go, what is he talking about? Resurrection. When he says I go, he's talking about resurrection. Please pay attention. This is how the gospel is preached. If you don't understand this, you cannot evangelize. So, it will mean therefore that the gospel is a message of persuasion. The gospel is a message of persuasion. Or the gospel is a message of faith. Then he says of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. The word krino in the Greek. The prince of this world is judged. That is, the prince of this world is decided upon by my work. The prince of this world is decided upon by my work. So the three things Jesus mentioned there. Are they situational or a finished work of his? Uh, the three things convince the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. Are they situational or a finished work of his? So the gospel we are preaching, is it a situational gospel or the finished work? Because he will convince the world of sin... Because they believe not on me. What belief do they not believe? Resurrection. Alright? And the resurrection, is it a situational event or a finished work? He will convince the world of righteousness because I go to my father. Going to my father, is it a situational or a finished work? So in going to my father, what happened to the believer? He came to live on the inside of the believer, okay? So, and that's a finished work. Is that right? Now, then, the prince of this world is judged. Is it a future event or what is finished work accomplished? His finished work accomplished the judgment of Satan. When Jesus rose from the dead, Satan's kingdom was judged and finished. So, the three events, are they situational or they are finished work? Finished work, all right? Now, pay attention here. John 16, 12. John 16 12. If you're catching it, shout glory. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Hmm. Hmm. Many things to say about what? Present tense or resurrection? Exactly. His resurrection. Now look at verse 13 now. Hey, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, hmm, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Look at me, everybody. How many of you remember that when I was teaching in Christ's realities, this is exactly where I stopped. How many of you remember that? I even did a reconstruction of that verse. How many of you remember that? Okay, so uh, I'm not doing in Christ realities, but because the message is one, you will hear things that are there here. Okay, so now pay attention here. If you didn't get it that day, you must get it today. I want you to hear a powerful amen. amen. I say, if you didn't get that explanation that day, you must get it today. Amen. That amen is still looking for how to come up. All right, now, let's go back again and read John 16, 13. <clears throat> How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, 
He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. The word to guide is a critical term. It's used to show a path. To show a path. You will see that word in Matthew 15, 14. Matthew 15, 14. And Luke 6, 39. Luke 6, 39. To show a path you have never known before. That is the meaning of he will guide. To show you a path you have never known before. To guide you. Like Acts chapter 8 verse 31. See the way Acts 8 31 uses that word to guide. Acts 8 31. And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he will come up and sit with him. That is, understandest thou what thou readest? He said, this part I have never been able to go there before. It's a part I have never successfully gone through. I need a guide to take me there. So when he says, the spirit shall guide you into all the truth, what he's saying is, he will take you through a path where you have not been before. A path you have never known. He will guide you into all the truth. This verse should actually have been broken into two. That verse 13 should have been broken into two. Put it up again. John 16, 13. Please pay attention. John 16, 13. 13, 13, 13. John 16, 13. John 16, 13. We need to lay hands on that computer and the person there. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Please listen carefully. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. The idea many people have is he will not speak of himself. But whatsoever he will hear. Who is he hearing it from? Who is the spirit going to hear from? Are you here? So pay attention. Who is teaching the spirit? Who is teaching the spirit? If they are teaching him, then it's not the spirit of truth. Do you understand? If they are teaching him, then it means he's not the spirit of truth because he's still learning. And if he's still learning, it means there are some things he knows that are not truth. The reason for teaching is to correct what you know that you shouldn't know. And to inform you what you know that you ought to know. Is that true? To teach you is to correct what you know and give you what you should know that you don't know. So if the spirit is being taught, he can be the spirit of truth. And if he's the spirit of truth, then nobody is telling him anything. Are you reasoning? Okay. Now, because that verse should be split into two, like I said. Because like he has been talking, he has been talking when, go back to verse 8. Because I want you to understand. I, I want you to get it. Verse 8 of John 16. When he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Question, how does the spirit reprove the world of sin? Through our witness. In our witness, what is the spirit role? In our witness, what is the role of the spirit? He shall testify of me. So if the spirit is doing the testimony through us and we are announcing the testimony as witnesses, what is the role of the spirit in our witness? Testifying. What is the spirit going to do? He will testify. 
What are we going to be? Witnesses. How does he testify? Through our witness. So what's the role of the spirit in us evangelizing? He is the one testifying. Huh? So the job of the spirit is to testify. Are you still in the class? Now put that scripture up again. I'm enjoying this. Put it up. 16.8 When he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He will. That's the job of the spirit. Verse 9 of sin because they believe not on me. Verse 10. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Verse 11. Of judgment because the prince of this world is John. Judge situational or resurrection. Exactly. Now, so 13. I have yet many things to say unto you but I I have when I speak in tongues, you better speak because there's something about to say that you need to catch. I am not the world. I am born of the spirit. I receive the things of the spirit. I understand the things of the spirit. I receive the things of the spirit. Now, now, come back. Put it up now. Verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you. Verse 12. John 16, 12. But you cannot bear them now. When he is come. When he is come. I have yet many things to say. The comforter whom I will send. He. Who is. Who is. He that is to come. And who is. I have many things to say. Huh? <laughs> who is. When he is come. He will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And who is, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Eh? Okay, wait. John 14, 16. <clears throat> Back to where we started the journey. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you for how long? Forever. Next verse. Even the spirit of truth. Who is Jesus? The way? The way? The way? Even the spirit of... Who is the spirit of truth? Okay. Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be, and shall be in you. 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. You didn't see that. Did you just see what just happened here? Go back, go back, go back, go back to the previous verse, verse 17 again. Verse 17 again. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. For he's dwelling with you now. He's the one walking with you now. Uh, he is with you now. He dwells with you. Put up that scripture. Don't remove it. He dwells with you, but in a short while, he will be in you. Are you watching now? Now the next verse. Hey, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come. When he is come, I will come. You did, it. did you get that? When he is come. Then he now said, the he I'm talking about is myself. I will come. Are you in the building now? John 16, 12 now. Let's go back to the case in point. I have <laughs> go back to verse 8. Zakota. You, you must catch this one. When he when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Next verse. 
of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, next verse, because I go to my father and you see me no more. Next verse. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Situational or resurrection. So all of this is resurrection. Whose resurrection? Jesus. Next verse. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Next verse. How be it? How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. No. In this instance, he is talking about the witnesses. For the witnesses will not preach themselves. He's not talking about he that will come. But rather, they that he will speak through. They will not speak of themselves. Is it getting clear now? Put up that scripture. They will not speak of themselves, but whatsoever we shall hear of the spirit in us that is bearing testimony, that shall we speak. Is it getting clear now? Then the spirit will show us things to come. Did you get that now? Mm -mm -mm. Please, did you get that now? Now, the word show is the word anagelo. Anagelo. A-N-A-G-E-L-L-O. He will show you, then he will speak. He shall not speak of himself. Now, that word, he shall not speak of himself, that's really an open pronoun, which can be them, they, it, or you. It's an open pronoun. It's an open pronoun which can be they, them, it, or you. So when he said, he shall not speak of himself, whatsoever you shall hear. He shall not speak of himself, whatsoever you shall hear, that shall you speak. He will show you things to come. Is it clear now? If your Bible was mine, I will write it exactly the way I'm saying it on that page of my Bible. It says, Whatsoever you shall hear, that shall you speak. He will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. So the question now it will be, who is the one showing us things to come? Huh? Talk to me, citizens. The spirit. Who is the one hearing? Huh? Who is the one hearing? You. Who is the one showing you? The spirit. Who is the one hearing? You. Who is the one speaking? You. What will you speak? Of yourself? Of what he, the spirit, will show you. Is it clear now? Yes. That's what he meant there. So, the recipient is the recipient of the spirit. The recipient is the recipient of the spirit. He is the teacher or the revealer or the guide. The spirit is the teacher or the revealer or the one that will guide us into all the truth. Or the one that will guide us into all the truth. Please pay attention. Follow the thought consistently. In verse 14. Verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Question, what will he receive and show you? 
he shall receive of mine and will show you. What will he receive and show us? The resurrection. The resurrection. Because that is where faith is required. The resurrection. Alright? Now, stay with me. Is this thing that he will show you private or for ministry? So, it will be what? It will be talking about what? What will he be talking about? No, that resurrection is going to be what? The message. And what is the message? Huh? Preaching? What's the message? Dead, burial, resurrection is what? The gospel. How is the gospel sent? Preach. So you will not be talking about a personal revelation, but the preaching. Look at verse 15. He shall, all things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. He shall take of mine. What will he take that is mine? What was Jesus talking about? Huh? Resurrection. He shall take of mine and show it to you. Verse 16. A little while and you shall not see me. And again, a little while and you shall see me because I go to my father. Remember, he said in chapter 14, verse 20. I go to my father. 14, verse 20. At that day, you shall know that I in my father ye in me and I in you. So I go to my father simply means I come into you. You shall know that I in my father, you in me and I in you. In other words, Jesus is talking about the word of the spirit in public ministry. The work of the spirit in public ministry. It's not a private engagement. It's not a private revelation. He will show you the things that I have done. He will show you my finished work. Just like he said in Matthew 28, 20. Go and teach all nations. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. So listen. The gospel therefore is communicated by the spirit of God. The gospel is communicated by the Spirit of God. Please, that's very important. The gospel is communicated by the Spirit of God. The convincer, the enablement of persuasion is not in my choice of words. When I go for evangelism or to preach, the convincer is not my oratory. The enablement of persuasion is now how I construct my world. Is a spirit. Am I teaching here? Yeah. The enablement of persuasion is the work of the spirit. So the gospel is this way communicated. Remember, after this Jesus told them in Luke 24, 25, Luke 24, 25. Oh fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. All that the prophets have spoken. So from time immemorial, the gospel has been communicated by the Spirit. From time immemorial, the gospel has been communicated by the Spirit. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. No grammar, no construction, no skill and oratory can convince a man. The conviction of men's hearts is the work of the spirit. So when we go to preach, we go in the power of the spirit. And when we speak, the spirit will breathe on them. I many of you remember what I taught you yesterday. When we speak, 
the spirit will breathe on them. When the spirit breathes on people, what happens? An inward quickening happens. Suddenly, they see the need to be saved. But it will have to be a combination of we speaking, them hearing, and the spirit breathing on them. Am I teaching here? So don't go and be calculating the kind of grammar you speak when you go for evangelism. You will come back with no result. Because it's not a work of eloquence. Neither is it a work of oratory. It is a work of the spirit. If I'm communicating, I want you to shout a powerful amen. amen. So the gospel is not anybody's new in invention. The gospel is not anybody's new invention. All the prophets spoke. Jesus himself quoted what the Spirit spoke through the prophets. Jesus himself. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So even Jesus communicated what the prophets had spoken for people to be saved or for people to, to, to be preached to. It was not a new thing. Jesus didn't invent anything. He just relied on what the Spirit has always been speaking through the prophets and through Moses. So preaching is not your innovation. Preaching is not your innovation. Preaching is you saying what the Spirit has said. Preaching is you saying what the Spirit has already said. In 2 Peter 1.21, Peter puts it like this. 2 Peter Chapter 1, verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That means the Holy Ghost gave the prophets what they said. The Holy Ghost gave the prophets what they said. Are you still in the building? Jesus Christ took what the prophet said and communicated it to the twelve. After communicating what the prophet had said to the twelve, he now said to them, you, go and preach. <laughs> Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scripture, the things concerning himself. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms, concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And then he said to them, that now they must go and preach remission, repentance and remission of sins to all nations. Are you understand it? After teaching them what the prophet spoke, he now told them to go and sound the same thing. Because the spirit does not contradict himself. The message is one. The message is one. Beginning from Moses. Beginning at Moses. And all the prophets. Am I still teaching here? If you're catching my flow, shout, I hear you. The same way the Holy Ghost enabled the prophets to communicate this gospel is the same way he will enable you to communicate it. Same way. And they came, you know, this, this message came from 40 people. Traders, professionals. Some of them were highly literate. Some of them were semi-literate. But they were all precise about the things they said. Precise. They all spoke the spirit of faith. They all spoke the spirit of faith. All of them. The gospel was communicated from Genesis down to the New Testament via the spirit of faith. They all said what the spirit said. Why? Because the enablement was not oratory. The enablement was not oratory. The enablement was not a craft. The enablement was not a skill. The enablement were specific words enabled by, the, by a specific spirit. 
The enablement were specific words. Specific words. Enabled by a specific spirit. So, in the traditional state, look at the first person who got up to fulfill these words. The first person in the Bible. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Are you getting equipped here? Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there was a rushing mighty wind from, there, was, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them authorance. And while they were speaking in tongues, the people wondered. And they said, these men are drunk. Peter got up in verse 14. Acts chapter 2 verse 14. Peter got up and said, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. Next verse. For these are not drunk as you suppose. This is but the third hour of the day. Next verse. But this is that. Glory to God. This is that. There was no new in invention. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Job. That in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And Peter kept speaking. Peter kept speaking. Peter kept speaking. Look at how Peter began to talk. Look at verse that 16. Put up that 16 for me. Peter was speaking. Acts 2.16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And Peter began to quote from Joel. It's not how you think that you preach. It is what has been said that you preach. You don't preach what you think. You preach what has been said. He now begins to fulfill the work of the spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. He now begins to fulfill the work of the spirit. Now the spirit is in him and on him. The spirit is in him and on him. He didn't hear that. The spirit is in dwelling in him and upon him. What is the spirit in? The indwelling. New birth. Huh? The nature of God. The new creation. What's the spirit upon? utterance. The spirit upon is utterance. When you go out and you start preaching, you are preaching by the spirit upon, which is the utterance of the spirit within. Am I teaching here? Yeah. I'm almost done. Pay attention. So, he begins to fulfill the work of the spirit. He begins to say, this is what is written by the word. Check his sermon. He is quoting prophet to prophet, scripture to scripture. Look at verse 32 of Acts chapter 2. Kabayada. Are you still in the building? Acts 2, 32. This Jesus, glory, hath God raised up. Whereof? We all are witnesses. 33. I love 33. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he had shed for this, which you now see and hear. Next verse. Glory. For David, he is quoting David now. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit on my right hand. Next verse. Until I make thy foe thy footstool 36 36 therefore he quoted a prophet let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus whom you have crucified but Lord and Christ next verse now when they heard this they were pricked Peter didn't preach any new thing. He just took from what the Spirit has spoken in written form and reiterated it and the breath of the Spirit fell on the people and their hearts were pricked and they said, Sirs, what must we do? If you want to see the same response in your time, don't create a new message. Preach what the Spirit has written in the Scriptures. Shout, I hear you. Kabayada. Kabayada. 
Kaba yada. Woo. Through evangelism is not a reaction. You meet a man drinking alcohol. You say now, everybody that drinks alcohol will go to hell. That's a reaction. Through evangelism is not a reaction. Through evangelism is to use the same words. Don't be creative. Jesus was not creative. Peter was not creative. He just repeated same truth. Same. He didn't bring any new thing to bear. Huh. Same thing. Jesus, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them. You know, the, all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Peter said, men and brethren, for David said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right hand till I, till I make you, your enemies your footstool. This same Jesus, God has raised from the dead and has made him Savior and Lord. When they had that, bam, they were pricked in their hearts. Same message. Teaching good? Evangelism is so easy. If you know what to do. Evangelism is so easy if you know what to do. Look at Romans 16.25 as I close this service. Are you blessed tonight? Romans 16.25. Now to him, this is brother Paul now. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. What is his gospel? The preaching of Jesus Christ. Power City, what is the gospel? Shout it, let everybody in the world hear your voices. What is the gospel? Not how to survive recession. Not how to make soap. Not marriage seminar. Mingle tingle or tingle mingle. Or wingle mingle. <laughs> what is the gospel? The preaching, the preaching of Jesus Christ. And how is this Jesus Christ preached? According to the revelation of the mystery. Which mystery? Which was kept secret when? So what we are preaching is what has already been said. That's why it is Ke Keruso, town crier. That's why it's a Keruso, like reading news, taking the script without any emotions, present it. Power is in the words of that script. Power to save is in the words of that script. He calls gospel the preaching of Jesus Christ. According to the apocalypse of the Musterion. Look at verse 26 of Romans 16, 26. But now, he, it was kept secret since the world began. It was kept secret since the world began. It was kept secret since the world began. But now, it's made manifest. And how is it made manifest? By the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of Christ of, of, of the faith. What did he say to them? Go teach all nations all things that I have commanded thee. I have commanded thee. Put that 26 for me. 1626. I have commanded thee according to the commandment. I have commanded thee. What have I commanded thee? manifestation by the scriptures of the prophets that which has been written made known to all nations for the obedience of faith next verse Woo. to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ same old gospel will produce same old saints if we want to see the same saints that were produced in the Bible we must preach what the Bible preached same old gospel will produce same old saints. Same old gospel communicated same old way. Same old gospel communicated same old way. This is Paul who, that was not there in Luke. This is Paul that was not there in Luke 24. He was not there in John 16. He was not there in John 14. Saying the same things they were saying. Same old. 
Same tradition. Philip likely was not there, but that was a tradition. I can get creative with my job. I can get creative with my career. I can get creative with music. Even the music, we can use creativity to, to play music. I can get creative with our church building. Put the pulpit like this. Turn it like that. Put the stage like this. If I like self, I can create three steps here so that when I stand, I'm taller than this pulpit. I can get creative with all that, but I cannot get creative with the message. Do you hear what I said? I can't get creative with the message because the message is the same. The message never changes. Persuasion is the work of the Holy Ghost. Write it down. Persuasion is the work of the Holy Ghost. Not by reasoning what I think. The Savior never gave you the tax to save. He gave you the tax to preach. And he empowered you to do it. Some guys have gone to Bible school to learn how to talk. Craft words. Wow the audience. But they don't even know what the gospel is. They've gone to learn how to speak. Honey, I don't know if I showed you the video of a particular Bible school. I don't want to call the name of the church. Where pastors are taught to preach using pitches. You know, using pitches. It's a training. It's a course in the school. As I begin to speak to you about the goodness of God. As I begin to speak to you about the goodness of God. As I begin to speak to you uh, about the goodness of God. As I begin to speak to you. I have changed the pitch. I have come down. I'm looking for a comfortable level. They teach you all that with, 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 with designs on the, on, the, on the screen. How to stimulate people's emotions. How I can speak. And halfway I will cry and get you. Then I will stop crying and excite you and just be modulating your emotions. You know, like psychology. There are pastors who are trained to do that. But when you look at the kind of people they produce are an entertainment crowd who don't know their left from their right. Because oratory and skills cannot do this work. The men that turned the world upside down were unlearned and ignorant. No oratory, no skill, no craft. They just took it and boom, took it and boom, and the whole world was trembling. Am I teaching here? No polishing. R rugged men, crude men, people like Peter with knife in his pocket, still carrying knife inside pocket and following Jesus. And after three and a half years, he did not throw away the knife. His village training was still inside him. Three and a half years after, they're about to kill Jesus. He pulled out the knife. So he has been with it all this while. Yet these are the men that shook the world. My friend, listen to me. The equipment and the enablement is the Holy Ghost. Do you have the Holy Ghost? You are ready for the job. Do you have the Holy Ghost? You are ready for the job. Somebody shout, I must preach the gospel to every nation. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Say, I will raise disciples. Say, I am equipped. I have the power of the Holy Ghost to preach this gospel. I didn't hear a powerful amen. I didn't hear a powerful amen. I didn't hear a powerful amen. So they have people responding to what is not the gospel. Because when your emotions are wild, you will respond not because of the gospel. You know, honey, they taught us to preach like this back in the days. Yeah. I've been preaching to you about salvation you don't want to believe. The other day I went for evangelism and I told a young man about Jesus. I begged him to receive Christ. He didn't receive Christ. Few minutes after I left, a car pushed him down. He died and he's facing eternity without assurance. My friend, as I'm leaving you now, you never come sure you will get to your house. What are you talking about? When I finish that and I say, now you want to be born again, even animals will be born again. <laughs> even goats will come out. So we are producing people that are not saved by Jesus. Fear. Hellfire is very hot. Eee! The fires of hell. The Bible says, their worms diet not. Worms will be moving all over your body. Imagine yourself with 10,000 worms moving. 
You're crying. Fire is burning. And the worms are not dying. Hell is real. The fire we use for cooking is the smoke of the other fire. If you don't want to enter that fire, come out. Uh -uh. Even flies will come out. So we have believers who are not born again. They are just unbelievers rebranded. Because a balo betete, that thing that will bring the breath of the Holy Ghost that will quicken a man has not been spoken. Say salvation is in the message. Say salvation is a function of the message that is preached. Not the feeling. Ooh, ooh. E, e, e. All that, you can be crying for fear. And you can be crying because police will arrest you that night. And the service is about to close. And now you have remembered that police, they are waiting. So why won't you cry in case God will see your tears and drive the police away? People cry for many reasons. A brother can break into tears if the person is owing suddenly appears in the service. He waited for him to come home. He didn't come home. He waited and waited. He didn't come. He traced him to church. Then he came and sat where he's seeing him. He's seeing him. Why wouldn't he cry? People cry for many reasons. It's not crying that is salvation. It's the message that brings salvation. If I'm teaching, shout I hear you. I say, if I'm teaching, shout, I hear you. Get on your feet tonight. Let's celebrate these realities. Let's celebrate this enablement. Let's celebrate this enablement. Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Somebody shout, I have been endued with power. Say, I have been endued with power from on high. I am a witness of the message of his resurrection. Say it again. I am a witness of the message of his resurrection. One more time. I am a witness of the message of his resurrection. Let's blast in tongues for 30 seconds, everybody. Watching on TV, watching online, wherever you're watching. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Zekando mereka tonengle de manga. Hola bende le de bobre de pira da bababre de kele de bababra nakata. Negro da granangle de boboro de bosakaya. Ega basha, ega basha, ega basha, ega basha, ega basha, ega basha. Meto le bira te bebe bere te le baba baraka Engele le babre Engala nanga Engala nanga Mengrandangro da bo se kelea Ege ba shokola da babo Ege barato bete Betelete betelete Ege le boroko to bele de baba Hey Thank you my father In the name of Jesus Can I hear that amen on a note of finality Lift your right hands to heaven, Father. Thank you for utterance and boldness. 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 Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, receive boldness. Receive utterance. Receive boldness. Receive utterance. Receive boldness. Receive utterance. To, to, to preach the gospel. To declare the truth of the gospel. And I decree... That as you go preaching this word, these signs follow you. As you go preaching the word, the Lord walking with you, confirming his word with signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, as you preach this word, the Lord walking with you, confirming his word. Zakotakabaya. Gaga yana gaga. Great grace is upon you. Great power is upon you. Great grace is upon you. Great power is upon you. Great grace is upon you. Great power is upon you. Great grace is upon you. Great power is upon you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Go ahead. Let's celebrate the power of God that we carry. Let's celebrate the mandate. Let's celebrate the mandate. Glory! Glory! Amen.
Amen. Get a good offering. Let's give tonight. Tomorrow morning, 7.30 a.m. I'm going to be bringing the continuation of this teaching. This is where the robber meets the road. A messenger without a message is not a messenger. What makes a messenger is the message. This is critical. I need everybody here by 7.30 a.m. Those of you watching online will be live. Those of you on Kingdom Life Network, tell other people about it. We'll be live tomorrow morning. And listen carefully. We are giving out outline, I mean manuals for evangelism and discipleship that you can use to disciple people as you evangelize. But like I said, it is strictly for people that are part of Power City campuses, people that are part of Power City, leadership, you want, you know, because we don't want to give you a manual, you just keep, we want to give you a manual because we know that you are part of us and you are involved in evangelism and discipleship. And these manuals are going to be given free. So we want to be sure of the people who are giving it to. So if you are there, you want to get a manual, all you need to do is indicate where you are from, uh, then your campus, your campus coordinator, or if you are the campus coordinator, or if you're in a place where there is no campus, you want to start one. You know, you want to start one. So you need tools for work. Then send an email to Abel Damina Ted. I think that's what they told me yesterday. I didn't mention the right thing. So let me get the right thing so that I can mention the right thing. Um, yesterday, um, 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 I'm looking for it. <clears throat> All right. It is... Supposed to be Abel Daminated. Abel Daminated. Abel Daminated. Abel Daminated. Abel Daminated. Daminated. Abel Daminated. 2020 at gmail.com. Abel Damina T E D 2020 at gmail.com. If you shoot that mail, we will get that material to you. And like I said yesterday, if you've been a victim of people disturbing you for money online and trying to make you not enjoy the salvation and enjoy the things you're enjoying through this house, send us a mail and report such characters to us. We know how to reach out to them and we know how to deal with them. Or somebody's proposing a business to you. You don't know the person. You people have only been talking epignosis on social media. You need to let us know so that we can advise you accordingly. We don't want anybody taken advantage of or cheated just because they came with a free heart to learn of Christ. Our platforms are not created for financial transactions. Our platforms are created for the word of God. Is that clear? Please, this is very important. All right? Lift your offerings up. Let's pray as we offer them. Father, we rejoice tonight that we give in faith. We give with joy. Our offerings are a sweet smell before you. And we rejoice that through our giving, the kingdom advances. People's lives are changed and touched through our finances. And we rejoice that our finances are a tool for the advancement of the gospel. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Hey guys, we're signing you off tomorrow morning. We're looking forward to connecting with everybody at 7.30 a.m. GMT plus one. And those of you in, you know, those of you in our campuses, we live in the able hands of our coordinators. Enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Let's celebrate everybody around the world for being a part of this great service tonight. Glory to God. Somebody shout a powerful amen. Hit the music. Let's do it tonight.